Welcome back everyone. So a few months ago you saw me restore a pair of headlights for my aluminum speedster and this right here is a design that I made for the tail lights and unlike the headlights these are going to be made completely from scratch so every little component that's required I'm going to show you how I made it starting out with the two backing plates here uh, out of this piece of half inch thick aluminum and obviously right here I'm not in my usual well-equipped shop but that's okay because there's always multiple ways to do something and the cavemen, cavemen did it this way with hacksaws for thousands of years so if it's good enough for them it's good enough for me it just takes a little bit longer So after a while at that, you can see I got the, the profiles here roughed out pretty well and got the edges cleaned up pretty nicely there for, for just the hacksaw. Counterboard the areas here for the, the barrel housings also with the hacksaw. And for the sockets themselves, I started out with some of these nut adapters. So you can see I bored out the big end there and turned down the outside a little bit too. And the last step here is to cut a little groove in here that'll allow the bulbs to slip in and then lock into place. The bulbs have two little lugs set 180 degrees apart so I'll make two little grooves for these to slide in, turn a quarter turn or less and then lock into place. This piece here is a thin sheet of fiberglass and I'm cutting out this little circle here to serve as the, the insulation to the positive connection for the bulbs. So you can see I'm filing this little circle in, into shape and it's got that little hole in the center where I'll thread in this little brass screw. Thread that in, file out the groove and then that will be the, the positive connection for the bulb. So I'll put a wire coming out the back end of that and that should give me a nice reliable connection. Okay, so I've got all the parts here for assembling the light sockets and you can see what I did on the base of these um, connectors here is I coated this in JB Weld and that way when I assemble it in here, I'll fill in this area also with JB Weld. Um, this ensures that the, the conductive metal isn't um, touching the housing here and that'll keep everything nice and insulated and then once this is assembled you won't be able to take it apart because that'll be epoxied in there but it should be really nice um, and clean looking once it's finished and what I have to help do that is I've made this ni nice little aluminum tube here I just taped to the corner of a plastic bag and so I'll use this to help like pipe the JB weld into that little gap there and it should make it easier to be consistent there. And that little flare at the bottom here too helps prevent it from running down past where I want it to.
Here's one of the actual barrel housings. This surrounds the, the light bulb socket and the bulb itself. Just a thin aluminum tube. You can see I turned out the inside there just a little bit and left that little lip on that back edge so that this red glass lens can slide in there. O-ring sits right behind it too. And then also got this cool little snap ring here that um, just sort of presses in. Those little teeth press up against the aluminum walls and it digs in just enough to hold that in place really firmly. And if you have to take that out, you can just use a pair of needle nose pliers and reach in there and just grab the corner. But it's a pretty, pretty convenient way of holding that in place and works really well for this application. The last piece here uh, is the bracket to hold it to the frame of the car. And I was able to use a friend's plasma cutter here uh, to cut out those brackets. And then we'll put a quick 90, de 90 degree bend in it as well. And this is by far the easiest way to do things. There's, I've been cutting out brackets like this by hand for years and I'm gonna have to get one of these CNC plasma cutters one day, I think. Now with both of the lights fully assembled, I can bolt them to the frame rails. And you can see I have them clamped on right now. And I have the, the lenses pretty much right aligned with the back edge of the frame. I thought that's how it looked best. And only thing left to do now to, to bolt them on is just to drill and tap a couple holes here. And now back up here at the dashboard, I'm um, drilling some holes now to mount the turn signal switch. And this is another thing that I'm really excited about too because I got this really cool um, period correct Bakelite turn signal switch, uh, which you'll see in a couple minutes here. But just finishing up the holes here, a couple mounting holes there, and a hole for the wires to pass through as well. And there you can see that switch there, just like you would see in, in any other car of the period. And also now I'm just drilling a quick hole for the, the headlight switch, which will just be a much more traditional um, toggle switch, which slides right in there. Now that the, both the lights and the switches are in place, I can start to wire them together. And you can see I've got an assortment here of really nice old timey cloth covered wire. These are new wires, but they have an extra cloth winding around them just to make them look old school. And you can get these in all sorts of different colors and, and pattern combinations. And so I had some fun with picking out the colors I thought would look best. And so here I'm just running uh, some wires from the, the back lights up to the dashboard. And the way, that I'm, the way that I'm wiring these tail lights is obviously there's two bulbs on each side. The top bulb is going to be the dedicated brake light circuit. 
And then the bottom bulbs will be dual purpose running lights and turn signals. So it complicates the wiring a little bit for those. You can see I've got a couple relays here that I'm plugging the wires into. That'll allow me to switch between the running lights and the turn signals. You can see this little silver thing is the turn signal flasher there too. So getting that wired up as well. All right, so I've got everything wired up right now. I have not tested any of it yet. Um, this is a mixture of sort of the final wiring and temporary stuff. All this, this non-cloth covered wire, this is all temporary. These fuses I have in here, these are temporary too. I'll, I'll eventually put in like an actual fuse box in this area with glass fuses, um, but this is good enough for now. All the power runs through this big ignition switch, which is basically just a battery shut off. So, you know, the power goes in here and, you know, right on the dashboard there, you can just turn the, turn the power on or off. So the way this should work is I should be able to flip that switch and have the tail lights go on as the running lights. And then the turn signal switch should activate uh, the front turn signal left or right, as well as turn as well as change one of the, the rear light, the rear running light to a turn signal. Um, and then headlights are um, pretty self-explanatory too. This switch here is off. That's low beams, that's low beams and high beams. So I'll set this up over here and flip this switch for the first time. I have not tested this as I've said. So we'll find out together if I wired it correctly, <laughs> but we'll see here. There we go. So there should be running lights, one on each side. Looks good. Try the left turn signal now. So the rear isn't flashing, but I think the front is, which is a good sign. Left turn signal right there. Switch that to the right. Looks good. The rear still isn't flashing, so I got that wrong. But do headlights here should be low beams, high beams. Those look good. Okay, so I figured out the issue here and it was an issue with my um, schematics themselves. Uh, the way that these five pin relays work here, if you aren't familiar with them is they show you the nice diagram right here too, but uh, five pins on the back. Uh, the way these are set up here is that pin 30 right there is connected to pin 87A in its resting state when you're not doing anything. That's what I'm using for my running lights right now. So if the car is on and these things are just, you know, in their resting state, 30 and 87A are connected, which is completing the circuit to my running lights in the back. If you send power between pins 86 and 85, they flip this internal switch here and that pin 30 connects to pin 87 instead of 87A. That's what I'm using to switch between the running lights and the, um, and the turn signals in the rear. The issue though is that 
the way I had this set up before, these are the these are the two relays for my for my turn signals. And I had the flasher all the way back here running to the whole circuit when I only should have it on the, the turn signal one. Because what this is doing, when I flip the switch, the flasher does engage and you can see the, you can see the lights flashing in the rear, but they're still always on because it's still getting the, the signal um, for the running lights as well. So I need to move the flasher to just the portion of the circuit that goes into pin 87 for the rear. So if I move it to move it from here to right there, then I'll do that. And I've set that up right now and it works and I'll, sh I'll show you that. But that means that I only have it in the rear because the front, the, the wires to the front turn signals um, no longer have that flasher in its, its stream. So I'll show you how that, how that works right now. I know it's, it's confusing to explain, but it, it's pretty simple. So now, as I said, I made that um, slight change to, to the wiring. Uh, I can turn the car on and you can see both of my running lights are on now, nice and bright. If I flip uh, my turn signal here to the left, now you can see I have my left turn signal flashing and the right is still as the solid running light. Uh, but because now there's no there's no flasher in the front turn signal circuit. This is on, but it's not flashing. So I just have to put uh, uh, an extra flasher in the circuit for that light and the circuit for that turn signal as well. And it should be good. I don't think there's a, a way for me to use just one flasher for all of them. Um, I'm sure someone will tell me that I'm wrong though. But that's what I will do because that seems like the easiest way to, to fix this. Another really cool thing I made here that I didn't want to leave out was the battery box. So you can see here cutting out the flat pattern using the plasma cutter and the, the battery will mount to the inside of the firewall, sort of right above the bell housing. And the battery itself is actually a pretty cool like small sealed lead battery. If you're curious of the, the exact one, it's a Genesis G16 EP battery. and. I, I like this because it's it's only like 13 or 14 pounds. It's pretty compact and it doesn't have the most cranking amps, but I read a lot of reviews online of people who have used it in in their other hot rod projects. And it, it, it seems to it seems to have good reviews in that regard. And I did test it. It does turn the engine over, although maybe not as fast as I would prefer. But there are a number of other like fairly small batteries like this with higher cranking amps that I could find. And, and replace if I if I had to in the future. All right, so I got my battery mounted in here right now. It's just sort of um, loose in here right now. Of course, I'll have to have some sort of strap or restraint to actually hold this into um, that little battery tray, but that's pretty good just for right now. These wires, of course, are very temporary, just to make sure everything works. So we turn it on. We've got the running lights, which are also the turn signals. And they're actually pretty bright. They look really good. And of course, we've got the headlights too, as I showed you before. Headlights, high beams. So that's pretty much all the lights that are now um, working. So of course, I still have to put in the other the other flashers in this, in the, the wires for the front turn signals, so that those ones actually flash too. I could do this, of course, much simpler and just using one flasher. The reason that this is so, this is more complicated with the relays is because I want to use the rear lights as the dual purpose running lights and turn signals. If I just use the bulb as a dedicated turn signal, then I could just run one flasher through the, the turn signal switch here with fewer wires and it'd be, it'd be much easier. But um, I like the, I like having those lights as dual purpose and then the top ones will be the brake lights, which should work out uh, pretty well.
So thanks for watching as always, and I will see you next time.